Good afternoon. I'm John Falcicchio, Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development, and welcome to the DEMPED uh, Weekly Recovery Check-In. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, our uh, impact on the environment, uh, as well as ways that you can uh, help your household uh, save money when it comes to those uh, nagging utility bills uh, that we all uh, know uh, come to us each month. Uh, provide us a vital service. So we're excited to uh, talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and we are uh, celebrating uh, Earth Day this week. Uh, so we're really excited uh, to have uh, the panelists with us today, uh, and we'll get to them shortly. But I just wanted to remind everybody about a couple of announcements that Mayor Bowser made uh, just yesterday. Uh, one, just a reminder that all uh, DC residents who are over the age of 16 are now eligible for uh, the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, residents can find out more information about where uh, they can get vaccinated by going to vaccinate.dc.gov. Uh, you can also find out information about uh, residents who are a little bit more seasoned than the rest of us, 65 years and older, uh, who can now walk in without an appointment at several vaccination sites across the district, but it is on set days. So go to vaccinate.dc.gov. Uh, also this week, on Wednesday and Thursday at Bald Eagle Recreation Center. Uh, there is walk-in vaccinations, no appointment required uh, for all residents uh, age uh, 18 and up uh, from Ward 7 and 8 at Bald Eagle Recreation Center. So be sure to check that out. One other announcement uh, that Mayor Bowser made uh, is President Biden has established what is called the COVID-19 Community Corps. That's gonna rally volunteers across the nation to help us as we push back on the pandemic and push to get more uh, residents vaccinated. So Mayor Bowser has in turn established the DC COVID-19 Community Corps. So we're gonna have a day of action on Saturday, May 1st, so we need your help. Uh, Serve DC is actually going to have, uh, or be the lead agency, I should say, on uh, setting up the day of action. Uh, so we want you to get engaged, get involved, and help us pre-register residents and get them vaccinated even that same day. So with that, uh, I'll turn it to our panelists uh, to talk a little bit about what we're doing uh, in order to uh, lead the community uh, in a conversation about how both the public and private sectors uh, can uh, collaborate to fight climate change. Uh, we'll do that through energy savings programs, we'll do it through workforce initiatives, uh, and really focus on how sustainability and job creation uh, can merge together. So we've got a lot of great panelists. Uh, I want to get to them uh, today, but I also want to thank, before we get started, one of those panelists, uh, Lamont Akins, who's now of PEPCO, who's also a Mayor Bowser alumni. Uh, so I want to thank him for helping us uh, pull this one together, uh, but also for collaborating uh, with Nicole Goins of DOEE. Uh, the Department of Energy and the Environment, uh, who helped us pull together today's event. Uh, so with that, I want to pull in our first guest, uh, who is known to many, uh, loved by some, uh, and that is Tommy Wells, the Director of the Department of Energy and the Environment, and I tease him because, of course, he's loved uh, by all, especially during the week of Earth Day. Well, thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Thank you for your leadership. This is, our city's certainly been through a difficult time but I don't believe there's any other city in the country that's had the, the thoughtfulness, the seriousness, and just the protection of the citizens at heart with Mayor Bowser and you helping do that. And um, thank you for your leadership. This has been a trying time for all of us, but I'm so glad that our city is, um, is doing what it's doing and has been as successful as it has been. So first thing is thank you, happy Earth Week. This is a, um, a exciting time. I'm Tommy Wells. I'm the director of the Department of Energy and Environment. And that um, means that I'm in charge of protecting the land, the air, the water, and to be sure that we have clean energy. And so with all that, we, um, you know, we're the Department of the Environment and we've accomplished a lot. Under Mayor Bowser's leadership, we were named the first lead platinum city in the world. We have done things like added more green roofs than any city over the past five years, and we've continued to help bring nature back into our city, and our city is thriving for that, and we're very fortunate for that. Next slide. And so one of the things that we do at Department of Energy and Environment is we help people 
with um, their, their power bills, their utilities, and the resources they need um, living in the city. And coming through the pandemic, many have been challenged, whether you've lost your job or you've decreased your wages, and we want you to have what you need to be here, stay here, and thrive here. And so we have the Low Income Energy Assistance Program. Some people just call it LIHEAP. And that means if you're unable to pay your, your energy bill, give us a call or go online at doee.dc.gov. I'll come back to that. And then we have a utility discount program. If you are at a lower level of income and continue to have trouble paying your, your power bill, we can get you into a month-to-month -month, um, discounted rate. Also, I know that your, your water bill has been shooting up, skyrocketing. I even saw the mayor's water bill. And I know that for everybody, the, um, the water bill is, is going higher than you realize. We have help for that. The mayor and the council have created a program called the CREAC program, Clean Rivers Impervious Area Charge Residential Relief Program. And it's a robust program to help everybody up to 100% of median income. The mayor is helping more people get help in this area than any city in the nation. And so don't be shy, give us a call. Weather assistance um, program, that's to help you, um, if you to lower your, your power bill, use less energy and be a greener city. Lead pipe replacement program, lead pipes are a problem, we'll help pay for the replacement. Lead reduction program, the greatest risk to our children has to do with lead paint. We will help you with that. And then solar for all, which we really want to get as many solar panels on roofs everywhere. So again, being led by the Deputy Mayor for Economic Development makes sense because the mayor has always said from the beginning, what's good for the environment is, is good for the economy. And with that, let me introduce my friend, Eli Hobson, the new director of our new Green Bank. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Uh, and thank you, Deputy Mayor. It's, a, it's an honor to be here with all these great partners. Um, we're excited to work with all of you. We're working with many of you to help meet the city and the mayor's climate goals. Uh, next slide, please. And you can go, thank you. As, as, as you all know, DC Green Bank was authorized in 2018 under the mayor's leadership um, and the city council's leadership and as a tool to help meet the city's climate goals. Um, so I started uh, almost a year ago, just over a year ago, uh, in April of 2020, in the midst of the pandemic, and we've been operating remotely since then. In fact, you know, my last in-person meeting, I think, was with you, Tommy, or with you, Deputy Mayor, as I interviewed for the position. So uh, it's good to be back in person and see you all again in, in the real world. Uh, but since we've launched those operations, we've been working tirelessly with the folks here on the stage and others to advance the clean economy uh, and really to uh, put into place our vision of a thriving, clean DC for all. Um, we do that by focusing on our core values, which we uh, took from the mayor, sustainability, clean economy, and inclusive prosperity. So we focus on those areas because they're important. Our environment is important for all of us, um, but we need to be reflecting um, that progress across the city. So inclusive prosperity is a critical piece for us to make sure that all residents in DC are receiving the benefits of our financing and our support, um, and that we're creating jobs that are available to all residents in DC. So our core focus areas, as we've looked to this challenge, uh, solar is a thriving economy in DC. There's a huge amount of opportunity across the city for solar, and we're very excited to partner uh, with Ted and others on several solar opportunities. Stormwater resilience, um, we've actually approved our first set of projects and we're in the process of closing um, program that uh, established by DOEE to help reduce the impacts of local flooding um, and help reduce the, the burden on our water system to get to those water bills that, that Tommy was talking about. So we're working with a local CBE to create projects that are gonna help um, retain stormwater when it, when it comes in, in uh, regions that, across regions of the city. Our other two areas, electric vehicles. Uh, there's a huge opportunity in electric vehicles for the city to reduce costs, to reduce the impacts of climate change, to create jobs, and reduce the cost of transportation overall. But electric vehicles are a relatively new technology, so the, uh, the financing space there is very unformed. It's an ideal world for the Green Bank to be participating. And then last but not least uh, is green buildings. In DC, as a city, our climate change emissions are coming 75% from buildings. So we focus on buildings um, and working with um, Department of Energy and Environment as the new building energy performance standards are being rolled out to make sure that there are financing tools in place for all building owners to meet those standards. 
At the Green Bank, two of our board members focus on affordable housing, so we are committed to making sure that affordable housing can be extremely sustainable, uh, both for the benefit of the owners, but also the residents who live there to reduce their energy burdens. Next slide, please. We focus at the Green Bank on being available to help projects at all stages of development. Um, we created a program navigator for the pre-development stage. So when a building owner doesn't even know uh, what their options are, we wanted to provide capital so that they can do engineering studies, design studies. Uh, when they're in construction, uh, we want to be able to support construction for sustainable projects. And then for permanent financing, we have the CLEAR program, Commercial Loan for Energy Efficiency and Renewables, and the existing DC PACE program, which we're working with Department of Energy and Environment on. So we want to make sure across all stages of project development that there's support for sustainable technologies. Our target areas and borrowers, uh, we're looking to work with small businesses. Uh, we support, we've supported actually exclusively CBEs at this point in terms of our loans uh, that we have closed and approved. And we are also looking to work uh, with affordable housing, as I mentioned earlier. And we've launched a program to work with nonprofits. Uh, it's an engagement initiative called the Community Impact Initiative. And already we've had over 20 faith-based institutions sign up and express an interest. So many of our nonprofits have been struggling through the pandemic. Um, it's been challenging, as, as you all know. And so as we are looking to coming back um, in person, many of the upgrades or equipment replacements or roof repairs have been delayed. The Green Bank is here to help with those and make sure that when we're building back, we're building back most efficiently to help save costs in the long run and reduce the impact on the environment. Next slide, please. I mentioned this briefly, but I wanted to just show you all where we've been doing our projects. Um, our closed and approved projects have been primarily in Ward 7 and 8, but also in Wards 4 and 5. Um, to date, we've closed and approved solar projects, working with DOEE, DCSEU, um, and our developers through the Solar for All program. Um, the Solar for All program supports our low-income families by providing free of charge electricity to them as the output for these projects and supports developers by providing funds upfront during the construction phase when it can be most challenging to, to see that financing. So by coupling the Green Bank Finance with the uh, SEU program and the DOEE program, we've been able to support uh, over three million um, in solar development, which we're very excited about. Um, that'll fund, uh, that'll supply for the residents who are receiving that electricity approximately seven million over the life of those projects. So this is a win-win uh, for our DC residents. You can also see where the, the stormwater projects are located due to the nature of our, um, our water system, which I hesitate to talk about when Tommy's in the room because he knows much more about it than I do. But the, the areas in which we're focusing on stormwater retention credits are in the outer core, or outside the core of the city. Um, so those projects, as you'll see, are also in Ward 7, 8, and, and Ward 5. So we're very excited to be working with our partners in those areas. Next slide, please. Moving from what we have closed and approved so far, I want to give a little preview of what we're looking to do, especially as you know, our economy is ramping back up as we're looking towards uh, moving out of, of this phase of the pandemic. Um, we've been working to build a pipeline, and we have a very robust set of possible transactions that we're looking at. So just a snapshot of numbers, you know, we have over 30 active leads, uh, over a billion in total financing costs. Now, we're not providing all of that ourselves. Um, as we've looked at these initial models, approximately 70 million of D.C. Green Bank dollars would be deployed for these projects if they all move to the completion stage. Um, Unlikely that all of them will do so, but that's the, that's the nature of our business. Um, but we wanted to give a sense of what the possibilities are. The need for investment in DC's clean economy is vast. Um, estimates are two billion, um, and there's certainly more uh, the broader you look at it. With our commitment of capital, we're not gonna fund all of that ourselves. Uh, we have to work with other sources of public and private capital, and we're very excited to see the steps that the new presidential administration has taken to be supporting clean transportation, clean energy, clean economy. And we look forward to working with our federal partners and our partners across the city uh, to deploy the needed capital and make sure that we here in DC are building back um, better, cleaner, um, and creating jobs for DC residents in the meantime. Next slide, please. And lastly, I just wanna say get in touch with us. We are excited to work with you. 
Um, we have um, a staff with incredibly diverse experience and backgrounds, experts in affordable housing, experts in real estate, experts in finance, and we look forward to working with all of you to make a clean DC a reality. Uh, and with that, uh, thank you, and I want to turn over to um, my colleague Ted uh, Trebu at the DC SEU, who can tell you more about the offerings there. Thank you, Eli, and thank you very much for having me this afternoon. Deputy Mayor Falcecchio and, and Director Wells, uh, I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to appear on this panel today to talk about the DC Sustainable Energy Utility and what we're doing here in the city and the impact we've been able to have over the last decade. We celebrated our 10th anniversary on May 24th, just a little over a month ago, and we're very, very proud of the work that we've been able to do here in the city on behalf of our residents and businesses. And I think as Director Wells said, we find ourselves in an unprecedented time when many of our residents and businesses now more than ever are in need of our services. So I'm very happy to talk about the programs that we have available for our residents and businesses large and small here in the District of Columbia. Uh, first of all, what is the DC Sustainable Energy Utility? Uh, besides being a mouthful, the, the uh, DC Sustainable Energy Utility was established in 2008 with the passage of the Clean and Affordable Energy Act that called for the district to hire an independent contractor to design and implement energy efficiency and renewable energy, specifically solar programs, on behalf of residents and businesses here. And so we're funded by our ratepayers here in the District of Columbia, both electricity ratepayers and natural gas ratepayers. And we have a contract with the Department of Energy and Environment where we are operating now in the fifth year of a five-year contract. We will soon be you know, renewing that contract to go on for another uh, five years of operations here in the district. But our services are designed to help all households and businesses, large and small institutions, reduce their energy bills, put new high efficient equipment, appliances, lighting, other measures into their homes and offices so that they can reduce their energy bills, reduce their carbon footprint, footprint and save on energy here in the District of Columbia. You can go to the next slide. We can show you some of the goals that are set forth for the organization. Of course, energy efficiency on the electricity side and natural gas side. But the creation of green jobs for district residents is critical to the work that we do here in the District of Columbia. I take pride in hiring district residents in our offices. We also have a very robust workforce development program where we employ individuals who have been unemployed or underemployed, we put them in a five-month externship program uh, where they work on site with some of our contractors, with others like the uh, DC Water, thank you Director Wells for taking some of our externs over at DC Water, the Metro uh, Board, the Council of Governments, other agencies here in the District of Columbia who are all dedicating work to helping our district residents reduce greenhouse gases and, and reduce their energy bills. Uh, local economic development is extremely important to us. We've spent over $50 million over the last decade with certified business enterprises here in the District of Columbia. On the bottom left, as you can see, we have a special emphasis on low-income services. 20% of our budget is dedicated to low-income programming. All of our renewable energy budget, which is about $10 million a year, is devoted to low-income residents as well. And so, as you can see, we have a wide range of services and offerings that are available for district residents and businesses as well. You can go to the next slide. Some of those programs for residents in particular in include helping residents buy high efficient lighting for their homes, helping them when their furnaces go out of order or their water heaters, um, helping them get rebates on high efficient equipment to put into their houses. Um, we also have the Solar for All program that we operate on behalf of the, of the Department of Energy and Environment that provides for income qualified residents free solar systems mounted on the roof of the home uh, at no cost whatsoever and no gimmicks whatsoever, free solar systems to our uh, income qualified residents. And the income qualification there is 80% or less of area median income. Uh, for commercial and multifamily customers, we have account managers and engineers who can come and walk through your building, help you assess your energy needs and help you make recommendations about the services that we can provide and the measures that you can take to improve your energy efficiency and reduce your energy consumption in your building. And then we have financial incentives to go along with that as well, so you can buy down the cost of the equipment 
that you will be installing in your building. And for our contractors here, and, and for uh, our workforce development as well, we have training programs that we offer every summer to help our contractors better understand the green economy, better understand contracting opportunities with the DC Sustainable Energy and Utility. And as I said, we spent over $50 million over the last decade with certified business enterprises, and we would love to work with more of them in the future. We can go to the next slide uh, now and just talk last but not least about the impact uh, that we've had over these years. We've created over $1.2 billion in lifetime energy savings for our residents and businesses here in the District of Columbia. That's reducing bills over the lifetime of the measures that have been installed by approximately $1.2 billion. Um, we have over $135 million in cost savings for our low-income residents, significantly reducing the burden on some of our residents who need the assistance the most. Uh, over $50 million invested, as I said, with certified business enterprises. And I'm very, very proud as a uh, fourth-generation Washingtonian to say that we've created over 800 jobs for District of Columbia residents, and we look forward to doing so much more in the years to come. It's easy to find us. Um, we are located at 80 M Street Southeast, but our phone number is 202-479-2222. Just hit zero once the, once the phone goes live. You'll get a live person to talk to, either residential customers or commercial customers. Both, please call us up. We'd love to help our residents and businesses with their energy efficiency needs. And with that, I will pass it to Lamont Aikens from Pepco and thank him for helping pull this event together. Thank you so much, Lamont. It's good to see you in your new capacity over at Pepco, and it's been a pleasure working with you. Thus thank you so well. much, Ted. I appreciate it. And thank you, Deputy Mayor Falchicchio, for allowing us to be here this afternoon on your recovery call. This week, we are kicking off the Reduced Energy Use DC Initiative for 2020 in recognition of Earth Day to help fight climate change. In 2020, PEPCO joined DOEE and DCSEU along with more than 20 environmental, business, and community groups to launch a new initiative to engage district residents on the ways they can use energy more efficiently, take steps to reduce energy use at home, and save money while helping fight climate change. At PEPCO, we are committed to providing district residents with smarter, stronger, and cleaner energy systems. Through PEPCO's Energy Wise Rewards Program, DC residents can go greener during summer months and automatically reduce energy use. PEPCO offers information online calculators, and planning tools to help district residents and businesses reduce their energy use and save money. For additional information, please go to pepco.com. Next slide. The Reduce, use, the, Re, the Reduce Energy Use DC initiative asks residents to take a pledge to reduce their energy use, and we provide those that signed up with tips on ways to save and lower their energy bill. Last year, we engaged over 2,400 district residents that signed the pledge to reduce energy. Next slide. If you look at the slide here, you will see some simple energy saving tips, such as unplugging your chargers and electronics when not in use, turning off lights when you leave a room, and switching to LED light bulbs. This year, we're asking all DC district residents to take the Reduce Energy Use DC pledge Participants will be entered into one of more than 25 random drawings for a chance to win a $300 credit on their energy PEPCO, on their, their PEPCO energy bill. Next slide. Sign up is easy. Sign up now until Jul July 31st by visiting reduceenergyusedc.com or by texting save more to 52886. This summer, all PEPCO DC customers will take the pledge will receive weekly usage reports detailing tips on how to save energy and compare your energy usage to your prior week's consumption. We ask that you spread the word, tell your friends and neighbors how they can pledge to reduce energy use too. Follow us on social media at Reduce Energy DC and share pictures and videos of how you save energy. Next slide. Also this Thursday, April the 22nd is Earth Day. We are encouraging district residents to wear green and engage in ways to reduce energy use in recognition of Earth Day. 
Sh share your pictures and videos at Reduce Energy DC. Next slide. For additional information, you can reach us at Lamont L A K I N S at pepco.com. But also, we all can help together. DC can make a difference. We take action to reduce use and help fight climate change. Now, I would like to introduce Gilbert Campbell, who is the co founder and managing director at Vault Energy. Good afternoon, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Falchacchio, and my esteemed panelists who I've had the opportunity to work with several. I'm Gilbert Campbell. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Volt Energy. Volt Energy is a homegrown Washington, D.C.-based solar development firm, but we have a national footprint. We develop solar projects, utility scale, rooftop solar, and community solar for a host of clients. And I'll just touch on a few local clients that we've had the privilege of working with. Uh, Pepco Holdings is one of our clients. We've developed solar on several of their outdoor substations. Uh, D.C. Government. At City Hall at the Wilson Building, we put solar there, uh, as well as we work with um, several educational institutions. Uh, it's a big platform for us to make sure we're educating students about the opportunities that clean energy affords us. We work with KIPP DC at one of their, uh, the Douglas campus in Southeast DC. We not only did solar, but we made sure that we educated uh, some of the younger students about how electricity works and how clean energy works. Um, and then one exciting project that we're working on now, we're developing a four megawatt project, which is about approximately $10 million at Howard University. We've completed the first phase. And one of the things that you know, I'm most proud about that, well, number one, I'm a Howard alum, but we've got students engaged from all aspects of the university, not just engineering school students, business school students, uh, arts and sciences students, because clean energy companies like ours need people from all walks of life and all backgrounds and disciplines. Um, and then we've also worked with, from large corporations nationally, like the Cheesecake Factory and Accenture. We're working with a lot of big tech companies. But some of my, the uh, projects that, um, we, that I've really cherished the most have been the community-related projects that we've done, some of which I've already mentioned. But we've installed solar at Florida Avenue Baptist Church, which was the first African-American church to ever to install solar energy, as well as we completed a project at 19th Street Baptist Church and here in Washington, D.C. as well. Uh, two things that I'm extremely passionate about, I mentioned one is working with young people, getting them involved in our industry. We've taken a lot of interns from local schools. And then second uh, is working uh, to address diversity, equity, and inclusion issues in the clean energy industry. Why is that important? When we look at who has been hit the hardest by climate change, uh, it's been black and brown communities as well as rural communities where you have uh, coal miners that have risked their lives to make sure that we all have been afforded with electricity. So we just feel this naturally right when we're building back better and smarter that these communities are at the forefront. And I compliment DC for all the great work for being a national model with programs like Solar for All. So when I'm, I'm part of a few national boards, which I'll just touch on briefly, where I'm helping to address diversity, equity, inclusion in our industry. I'm on the executive board of the Solar Energy Industries Association, and I lead the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and Environmental Justice Task Force. I'm also a board member for the American Associations of Blacks in Energy, where we're addressing a lot of these same issues. And I'm also part of a CEO collective called Renewables Forward, where it's a group of national CEOs that have come together to address diversity, equity, and inclusion in the clean energy industry, of which two of the companies are also homegrown DC firms, Soul Systems, and New Columbia Solar. Also, next slide, please. Oh, same slide, I'm sorry. I've also had the opportunity to, uh, to testify before the last Congress about the importance of diverse communities having a seat at the table as it relates to clean energy jobs and economic opportunities, and was also afforded the opportunity to be part of a small roundtable discussion with Speaker Pelosi about clean energy infrastructure and the importance of uh, making sure that all communities are, are involved. And then lastly, um, we've developed a vault a new concept and product called the Environmental Justice Power Purchase Agreement, or PPA. And what we're committing to is working with some of the largest uh, tech companies in the world and other large corporates to develop projects in rural areas like West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, coal country, and making sure that we're creating sustainable jobs, but then taking part of our revenue and contributing to a community impact fund to invest in urban communities to make sure there's a dual benefit um, to make sure we're getting diversity, equity, and inclusion, and fairness and equity across the board. Next slide, please. N 
Next slide. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, sorry. We're going back to the slide with Howard, if possible. So yeah, this is the project that I mentioned at, at Howard University. We we'll touched on that briefly, and then this is the project that I mentioned at, at Pepco. And I just want to close my remarks by saying that solar is uniquely positioned to help our country rebound from COVID-19. And the reason that I say that is for two parts. There was a study done by Harvard that showed that there was a particular matter called PM 2.5, which is an environmental pollutant found in black and brown communities that was exacerbated in COVID. And that's why the death numbers were a lot higher in black and brown communities. So as we were rebuilding back better and putting clean power plants in underserved communities, it will help to address that, which, which, is, which is vitally important. And then also looking at where the jobs going to come from post COVID-19. If we look before the pandemic, uh, the solar industry, as well as other clean energy industries, was driving our economy. Uh, and you, we saw that play out here in the district as well as one of the leaders in clean energy jobs in the country. So for those two reasons alone, for health reasons and for job reasons, you know, I'm very excited about what the industry is going to do. And especially with the leadership of Mayor Bowser and the new administration we have on Pennsylvania Avenue. Thank you. Well, thank you so much and uh, really excited uh, to have so many different partners doing so many different things uh, in the district. Uh, so thank you all for uh, being with us uh, today. And I guess the question that's probably on the minds of the folks watching is if you're a business owner, right, and you uh, really value sustainability, where do you go first, right? So think about it. If you're uh, sitting in your office right now uh, and you, you know, have a company, let's say you have 20 people who work with you, uh, but you're in an office setting, maybe you don't even own that office space, where do you go when you want to think about how you actually, uh, if you value sustainability, how you make it part of what your business uh, stands for? So I know that's a very broad question, but Tommy, you want to take a crack well, at it? I, I, I appreciate that question, um, Deputy Mayor, because so many of the companies and businesses in D.C. have this value that you're talking about, that they want to be environmentally responsible and they want to be able to attract employees that care about that because they are great employees. I'll first defer to my friend Ted, Ted Trebu, where they can help bring down the energy cost by saving energy, and he has um, the resources, funds, and the talent of the folks to help do that. Thank you, Director Wells. Uh, Mr. Palchecki, I, I really agree with, with the question. I mean, there are a lot of businesses out here who are trying to figure out what's our first step, what do yep. we do? Um, and we love questions like this. We have a project intake coordinator at our office, and that's her job, which is to specifically launch businesses on that path to sustainability. Um, you can reach us at dcseu.com, or you can call her, her name is Catherine. Call her at 202-479-2222. And so we have a myriad of programs that are designed for businesses large and small. Um, we work with small businesses from, you know, corner, you know, mom and pop stores up to the largest of businesses, Metro, the Water and Sewer Authority, hospitals and universities, hotels, um, to help them along a sustainability path. We like to start with the low hanging fruit, which is lighting. Lighting represents typically about 20% of the energy bill in a typical home or, or building. Lighting is one of those things where we can easily take out older and inefficient lighting, and we have good rebates that are available to help you install new lighting um, in your home or, or in your business. Secondarily, we look at air quality, which is going to be a huge issue once a lot of us start returning to our businesses, indoor air quality, your HVAC systems. So we can come in and take a look at your existing systems and make recommendations for improvements in how you, th these new systems as we understand them, um, when these large buildings are coming back online are going to try to recirculate more fresh air into the building more often. That's going to cause more energy use. So we want to find high efficient HVAC systems so that you don't run your energy bills up as you're trying to have improved indoor air quality. And so we, again, we have a, 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 lo a lot of programs that are available for our businesses, large and small. Um, please feel free to contact us either online. You can go in, and there's a list of all of our rebates that are there online. Um, you can also talk to an individual. And we can have an account manager or an engineer for some of your larger businesses actually come out and walk the property with you 
and make a, a set of recommendations. And not only recommendations, we will then do the, the engineering studies for you to allow you to understand your return on investment. So we can tell you if you invest in these energy me measures over here, how much your energy savings will be on a monthly or annual basis. So that helps you make an informed decision about your energy future. Great, and I saw Eli shaking his head, especially when you were talking about sort of the air quality and that air exchange and how that uh, will take energy to do. So Eli, I don't know, what do you advise folks as you think about sort of their first step into trying to really uh, take that value of sustainability and put it into action? Thank you. Um, to, to follow on on what, what Ted was saying, I think once that engineering study has been done to show the potential savings, that's a great opportunity for us to come in and provide the financing to help you support that project. So where there's a project that pencils out from a dollars and cents perspective, where you're gonna be seeing those energy savings on a month to month basis, we can provide the financing uh, over the long term so that you know that's a, a savings to you on day one based on the financing that the Green Bank can provide. And we are, um, you know, we're happy to support projects that are looking at both internal uh, air quality, so the, the increased need for circulation that we're gonna see as folks are coming back, um, that's an important metric for us, and at the same time, um, that are supporting energy efficiency. So, happy to support those. And, and I would make the same statement for renewable energy as well. Uh, we have renewable energy, solar programs for our businesses, and we will be offering new programs starting in October of this year for renewable commercial renewable energy projects. And so please, if you're thinking about a renewable energy project, we're going to combine solar and energy efficiency in the same buildings together to really get the biggest bang for our bucks. And so uh, we would love to work with, with some of your small and large commercial businesses to install solar and complete energy efficiency projects at the same time. Right. And yeah, I was going to say, Gilbert, you probably want to jump in here because you probably see folks at all different uh, scale, but also at all different sort of uh, levels of maturity in terms of what they've done to execute sustainability. Absolutely. And, and our company just finished a uh, project with Accenture where we develop sustainability plans for small and diverse businesses. And I would say for companies that are looking at uh, where do you start, a sustainability plan is a good first step because that also is going to encompass doing uh, energy efficiency audits, which I agree, Ted, is the first step you take is energy efficiency and particularly lighting but also looking at what can you do organization-wise from a sustainability standpoint. The UN Global Compact has what's called SDGs of Sustainable Development Goals, and it's a good tool guide to make your organization just run more efficiently. And it's not just energy as well. It also deals with like human rights and other issues as well. So I would definitely say start with a sustainability plan followed by a, uh, an energy audit and leverage all the wonderful programs that are here in the district. It takes a lot of lighting to make me look good, so I hope that energy audit starts here <laughs> at the <laughs> weekly check-in. Uh, but I think that um, it, it can be a little bit, um, it just, it could seem a little bit opaque to folks too, because I think that energy audit, does that really illuminate sort of the way forward for folks? Because mm -hmm. that, I think even just that energy audit, you know, where do you start? How much capital are you gonna need up front? How do you walk clients through that, Gilbert? Sure, great question. So we focus more on the back end. So I, I encourage even I'm selling against myself because energy efficiency is the most important first step that you can take. Mm -hmm. Because if you're putting solar sexy and people want to do solar, but if you don't have your building envelope tight and you're making sure that you know, you're efficient, then I think solar should be the second option after you've already gone through efficiency. So we encourage our clients to look at the programs like the DOE and DCSEU has and energy efficiency first, um, but then we walk them through what the savings can be from solar and appropriately sizing a, a system to what their needs are. But uh, I'm a huge proponent of efficiency. Right. So let me add on to the, to the question here. A lot of residents, and, and particularly our businesses, don't exactly know where they are on the energy yeah. consumption spectrum. Mm -hmm. They have no idea as a business of 200,000 square feet if they are consuming more or less than a similarly sized business that's operating in a similar manner. So what we have done in conjunction with the Department of Energy and Environment is called an energy benchmarking service. And the energy benchmarking service is a requirement that all businesses above a certain size actually report on their energy use and so that we can compare 
buildings of similar sizes and actually understand how efficient or hopefully inefficient certain buildings are. And this is the, the platform in some respects upon which we are building our building energy performance standards where we're gonna require those buildings that are not as energy efficient to start making improvements over the next five years in their energy efficiency, um, you know, the dynamics within the building. And so those energy, th those buildings that have not been performing very well have been notified recently of the fact that they're below the standard and that they will need to make some improvements. Um, we stand ready to help those businesses, and, and I should say that in the months and years to come, our utilities, Pepco and Washington Gas, will also be offering energy efficiency programs to help our residents and businesses improve on their energy performance as well. And, and so uh, we think it's very, very important though that you start, one of the things is look at your benchmarking score. You'll understand where you are relative to other businesses of similar sizes. And then after that, you know, there are, are audits and then there are what we call that you have an ASHRAE level two audit, which will give you an audit that will actually go in and, and certify uh, by a professional how, how well or how poorly your building is doing. But we have engineers who can walk through there and give you a, a very, very strong set of diagnostics uh, that can also help you. And, and this is free of charge to you. I, I wanna emphasize yeah. this. This is f these, these how, having our account managers and engineers come to your building and do these analytics is free of charge to you as a business owner. Please avail yourself of the services that we provide. And I, when I say free of charge, I, I should mention buildings and residents are paying a, a surcharge on their energy bills to fund our, our work. So they are investing in these energy efficiency programs. I encourage them to avail themselves of the services that are available. And Ted, uh, for folks who are renters, not building owners, can they still come to you? Can they still access the services? Absolutely. Both the energy efficiency programs within the, the home and the solar programs are available to renters as well as homeowners. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lamont, tell us a little bit to, uh, Ted mentioned that, you know, a focus by the utilities on efficiency. Tell us a little bit more about some of the work that Pepco does in order to uh, inform the customers. Well, right now, one of our projects is the Reduce Energy Use DC initiative, and we are working on other e energy efficiency programs that will come out in early 2022, uh, which we can't talk about right now. <laughs> but one of those programs, like I said, is Reduce Energy Use DC, which started this week, uh, and you have the opportunity to get a $300 credit towards your energy bill if you sign the pledge to say you will reduce energy use uh, over the summer. Okay. Uh, we had a question uh, come from uh, our team. Uh, a lot of times we have questions from listeners. Uh, but when you see me looking at my phone, I'm getting the questions queued up. Uh, and one of the questions came from one of our team members, and they said, so, all right, if you're a condo owner, right? So just, you know, and I assume, uh, just knowing this team member, it's probably a one-bedroom condo, right? Should, should they call you, Ted, to say, come look at my unit and see what energy efficiency? How, do you go down to that level of granularity? Unfortunately, we can't come and actually look at an individual unit, but we do have customer service representatives who can walk the owner of the unit through a litany of different programs that we have available, even if you're just a single family homeowner, mm -hmm. if you have a single family home, or if you have a condo um, and, and it's just you know one unit, you, you can still call us. We have a customer service rep who will walk you through the various programs that we have. You know, oftentimes in condos, people need a new water heater, uh, a new furnace. Yep lighting um we we have i think dish, I dishwashers I, I, you know, dishwashers dryers all of those things we have rebates that are available for all sorts of appliances that you would put in your home and so we can walk you through how to access those those uh, rebates and, and various appliances that are available i think I what might you're looking new, for are yeah. energy star appliances in general. well and i think too you um your condo association too might mm -hmm. want to do it building one i saw eli yeah shaking his head yeah. right Ex exactly one of our loan products the the clear program was initially designed for condos and cooperatives because many of those communities uh, you know it can be hard to make the investments necessary um, over the long term it's easy to put those off um, so that you see large building needs uh, roof replacements windows we mentioned a lot of those common spaces um, clear is a, a product designed to help with that investment and to help the, the whole association take advantage of the savings that result 
Absolutely. And we almost have sort of a continuum here um, where folks should start with Ted. Eli may be able to help finance. Mm -hmm. Gilbert could help with actually the product that you're going to install. And then um, uh, Tommy and uh, Lamont are going to make sure that it has well, the, the sustained. Let me yeah. add to that, Deputy Mayor, that um, under Mayor Bowser, we're investing between 50 and $80 million a year in this continuum of services. Yep. And we are creating one of the most robust um, energy economies and environmental economies, green economies in the country. And so as we go to uh, building energy performance standards and as we become more energy efficient, whether it be the SEU, the Green Bank, or PEPCO, and all of our um, contractors and developers who help us implement this, it is a robust future for the District of Columbia that is, I'm sure um, Mr. Hobson can tell you how this will help leverage over a billion dollars within the next 10 years. And so our city is on the front edge of creating new jobs, of retrofitting our buildings, providing um, green, safe energy, while people start saving money. You can't get any better than that. Yeah. And, and I'll just add for th that question, Please. if you're a condo owner or a renter, you also still can benefit from solar via community solar. Right. So for example, let's say you can't control what's put on your rooftop. <laughs> There's, you can buy uh, a portion of a solar project that is, that is sited somewhere else. So let's say for example, um, Pepco has used one of their uh, facilities to put solar on the rooftop. Uh, renters and, and or condo owners can buy that solar so they still can benefit from uh, purchasing clean energy. And uh, Director Wells too, tell us the, I know there are some homeowners, I know of one uh, who actually works with us and he said that it really, um, it's kind of like a revenue generator for him, an income generator, I should say, uh, for him to have that solar panel on his roof. So if you can get solar panels on your roof, and especially if it's looking south, and you don't put so solar panels on there, you're just saying you don't want money. You just wanna you know, turn it away because in DC, we have solar renewable energy credits that you'll be able to sell from your panels. Mm -hmm. the, um, these are the most valuable solar energy credits in the country. An example is a solar energy renewable credit in Maryland sells for about $34. In DC, it's $434 that you generate um, on your roof. And then you have a lower power bill, so you're saving money. And um, you can also get an income tax credit from the federal government, so you lower your tax bill. And you can also lower your tax bill through um, depreciation of the hardware. So with all of that, I don't know why you wouldn't do it, but it is um, the most valuable thing you can do related to energy if you can put solar panels on your home. Well, Mr. Campbell is exactly right. It's not just for homeowners or people that have roofs on their, their homes. With condominiums, you can become a subscriber for community solar and help, you know, again, to deploy that way and get um, a lot of the same benefits, some of those. So exactly. If you can put um, solar on your home in Washington, D.C., and you haven't, you're gonna to have to think to yourself, why don't I want that money? And, and I was just gonna to add to Director Wells' point, um, the renewable energy credits are worth so much in DC that allows as a developer and a financier to do interesting things. So for example, at Howard University, uh, we're able because of the RECs to be able to replace some of the roofs that are older right. to put right. solar on. So even if you're a business and you think, well, my roof's too old and I can't afford solar, there are a lot of creative things that you can do um, whether you buy it and own it yourself and monetize the RECs or third party developers like us that will finance it for you and just sell you the electricity on how you're used to paying for it. But uh, there's a lot of opportunity in the district and there's no reason for those that want solar that you can't get it. So I 100% <laughs> agree with that, Director Wells. Yeah, and I guess that's actually a good question. Gilbert, that is for um, like an institution or a business. I wonder, and this might be more Ted, but like for that homeowner that Tommy just talked about, right? that doesn't want to just give away the money because they want to actually uh, see that income. Like what literally is their first step and are they going to need to cover any upfront costs or how does that work? I don't know. So, Maybe so that's they're, they're, we operate a program that's specifically designed for income qualified residents who are 80% or less of area median income. If they would like us to install solar on their homes, we work with about five different local contractors here in the District of Columbia. We take great pride in the local contracting base here. Um, we can have a contractor come to your house, 
Um, they'll need to ask you for some income qualifying documents. But after you, you produce the documents, we can then assess the house in terms of the integrity of the roof, whether or not it's facing south or in another direction where we can still hopefully uh, install solar and whether or not there are not too many trees around you that would shade the solar. But, but after that, we, we install over 100 single family systems a year at absolutely no cost, no upfront cost, no back end cost to the residents and they are able to receive the credits on their bills to reduce their energy bills. They can't receive the solar renewable energy credits that Director Wells discussed. The installers keep those as a part of the cost to pay them back for installing these systems free of charge for the residents. But for your upper income residents, um, there are still many solar installers here who would love to install solar on their roofs. And so they can call us uh, as well. We can recommend a number of different highly qualified contractors here in the city who can come out and make that assessment of the home and the roof um, and install solar. Solar is now available um, in, in some respects, uh, all, free of charge or virtually free of charge to, to our residents. And if you want to pay for the system, you are fully able to do that as, as well. And maybe, I, I don't know if you guys have, Eli, if you have financing for- Not yet for, for single, single family, family we're working on it. But, um, but if you want to pay for the system up front and then take the uh, income tax credit that, that the uh, that Director Wells was discussing and keep the solar renewable energy credits, it is a, a great source of revenue to the individual homeowner. I, my, my next door neighbor uh, did that in fact and um, has all, often when, when, when we talk, he talks about how much money he receives on a quarterly basis because of his solar renewable energy credits. Um, and, I, and I really applaud him for having done that. Well, and that's where I think we just want to make sure that people know that sustainability is accessible. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we want to leave folks with today, uh, is just letting folks know that there are uh, avenues uh, to explore, uh, you know, making sustainability part of your business model as well. I would also say that if you're a resident in D.C. and you are not figuring out how to get to us online, call 311. And ask, um, do you need help with your power bill? Do you want to learn more about solar? There's the, all the topics that we've talked about today. If you call 311 and ask, it'll be routed to, to our agency and we'll help you get there. I love it because I actually took down Catherine's name, uh, who's the uh, project <laughs> intake manager uh, for yes. TED, mm -hmm. but that you can call 311 and right. get connected. Now 311 will walk you through the process or they'll uh, direct you over to? They'll direct you over to us. Or if you just, um, for the other programs in terms of support for your, your energy or water or other utility, they'll send you um, the forms. That if you're not comfortable online, they'll send you the forms if you call 311. So 311 will get you generally to where you need to go for most of the things we've talked about. Well, and David Gaddis and the team at DC Water is probably going to uh, not be happy if you don't mention how you could also think about water savings as well. Uh, so you want to spend some time on that as <laughs> with us? Well, I, I will say that with the increased cost of, of our water bills to pay for the, um, you know, cleaning up the Anacostia River, which has been very successful, and thank you to all the residents, but we will also help through DOEE with your water bills and that... We also will, can refer you back over to DC Water on how to even save more water um, through um, water saving devices. And so we're here to help and we work very closely hand in glove with um, DC Water with, through DOEE to help you provide those services. So uh, believe it or not, we're running uh, short on time. Uh, so I'm gonna ask each panelist for a uh, final thought. I'm gonna start it down at the end. Uh, with Gilbert and work our way back this way. But before we do that, just wanted to remind folks too that may be watching, uh, we know that a lot of uh, residents have been challenged uh, this uh, year, given the pandemic, with income loss, with job loss. Uh, for folks who need help with their rent or utility, uh, there's also a program, we launched it last week, uh, but uh, Mayor Bowser wants you to know that if you need help, uh, she's got your back. So you just gotta go to stay.dc.gov, uh, again, stay. <laughs> .dc.gov, and that's where you can apply today for rent and utility uh, assistance. So I wanna make sure that doesn't get lost in this conversation. We're gonna use every opportunity uh, to mention that new program, uh, and this is a brand new program. It could actually provide support uh, for back rent for the last 12 months, as well as help you with the next three. 
And if you qualify, it could actually even help you for another three on top of that. So what we're looking for folks to do is to not try to weave through and try to understand their eligibility and uh, just you know be turned off by a, a new source of funding. This is a $352 million federally funded program that Mayor Bowser needs you to apply for. We need to make sure we utilize this resource. So go to stay.dc.gov today. We also have a phone line uh, that's open weekdays, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, that's 1-833-4-STAY-DC. You can call that line with questions, but really all the information you need is at stay.dc.gov. Uh, so with that, I want to get a parting thought from each of our panelists, and we'll go to Gilbert uh, first. Yeah, thank you. I'll just say, um, from doing projects in multiple cities across the country, how fortunate we are in the district to have robust programs and incentives to do all of the exciting programs we're talking about. And a lot of the other cities we work in, it's very difficult to uh, get a lot of projects uh, financed because of a lot of different reasons, not having programs like we have here in the district. And I would just say for those that have been able to successfully navigate these programs, get solar energy efficiency uh, initiatives, to help those that don't have the means or the education to point them in the right direction, all these agencies so they know about the programs that exist in the district. Great. Lamont? I just want to thank the Deputy Mayor again for having us here today, also the panelists for agreeing to be in here today. And I just want to challenge our residents to uh, reduce their energy use over this summer and to get additional information, go to reduceenergyusedc.com. Thank you. Let me say how proud I am of our city, of being a green city. And I know we have things coming that, um, being your director of the Department of Energy and Environment, that you may want to ask me about at another time, but things like, uh, you know, the cicadas are coming. And I don't know if there's anything that our deputy mayor wants to talk about that in terms of economic <laughs> development and our restaurants and opportunities. But, um, you know, many of the, this wildlife it may seem foreign, but it's really our friend, and also provide other opportunities as resources. But so the cicadas are coming. The, the city is healthy, we're returning nature, and it's possible that the Deputy Mayor for Economic Development may even want to talk more about cicadas, but happy Earth Day. <laughs> I, I don't want to get ahead of our own news uh, director, oh, so I'm absolutely. not going to announce anything just yet. But I will actually, on uh, Thursday, you and Mayor Bowser are going to be where and talking about what? That's exactly right. Um, the official Earth Day is on the 22nd, that's on Thursday. And Mayor Bowser is joining um, us down at the Anacostia River at Kingman Island. Kingman Island is the first conservation district ever designated by a mayor in DC, but almost any other city that does anything like that. And so she designated Kingman Island and Heritage Island as conservation districts to help, um, help all our residents get into nature and be by nature. But we have residents that also care about cleaning up nature. So we will have the Green Boat Program. And, then, and the mayor will launch the Green Boat Program where people can come down and get in a canoe or a kayak for free, and they will be given the tools they need to paddle out and with the safety equipment to paddle out and pick up trash off the Anacostia River, return it, catalog it, so we can see what's the most trash and citizen science at the same time. It's an exciting program, and she may be announcing some other things as well. It's a big Earth Day for all of us. It's the 51st Earth Day as we become the 51st state. And, and you're absolutely right. That's actually the day that the U.S. House of Representatives will vote on the bill. Uh, so I didn't know it was the 51st Earth Day. But That's thank right. you, Director Wells, for highlighting that. So let's go next to Ted to get his final thought. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Falcheckio. This is really for our residential customers. I would love to start everybody with an energy kit. We, we make these energy kits available to our income qualified residents for free and for others for only $10. The kit is worth about $60. It, com it contains energy efficient light bulbs, a power strip, and a low flow faucet aerator to help you reduce your water bill. Um, go to dcseu.com and you can go online and get your energy kit. It will be mailed directly to your home. Um, and, and as I said, they're only $10 for, for our market rate customers. It's a $60 value. They're free of charge to our low income residents. We can all get started with, with better lighting in our homes. Thank you. Great. Eli? Thank you. Thank you again for the, for the opportunity to speak today. Um, when I started, I did a listening tour with our developers and our affordable housing uh, residents and owners. And one of the common issues that they said is there's not enough pre-development financing out there. Um, you know, one of the challenges with energy efficiency, as we've been talking about today, and renewables, 
it's hard to figure out exactly what the opportunity is without spending some money. So we have just launched Navigator, a pre-development financing program. And so if you're a small business or a nonprofit looking to figure out what can we do, what can we afford, what's the potential income opportunities, as Director Wells mentioned so eloquently with solar um, and other programs, um, Navigator is designed to help you figure out uh, that work. So check it out, um, reach out to us, we're happy to answer any questions. We're at DC Green Bank on social media and info at dcgreenbank.com if you have any questions. Thank you. Great. Well, I just want to thank all of our guests for coming together today to talk about this important issue. We know that uh, sustainability needs to be accessible, and that's why we wanted to have today's session to make sure our business community and our residents were able to understand how they can take part in sustainability efforts. Uh, because really, as Director Wells said, this is a city uh, wide initiative. This is really about DC values uh, when we talk about sustainability. So we've got a mayor who's dedicated to it. Uh, so we'll all work together to make sure uh, that we can support this continuum, uh, that we can all be part of uh, the solution. So with that, I want to just thank you all for joining us today. Next week on Tuesday uh, at 4 p.m., we'll be back here with you. We'll actually have uh, representatives uh, from the Small Business Administration. Uh, they have two new programs, grant programs uh, for our restaurants, so our restaurant relief program, as well as the shuttered venue program. So those are two uh, new grant programs, brand new, uh, that are gonna be opening up soon, and we're gonna have the SBA come talk to uh, our uh, stakeholders in order to understand how to apply uh, for that funding. So we hope you'll join us again next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Uh, where we'll be back with you. Maybe we'll have some other food announcements uh, about <laughs> cicadas and uh, just how we're going to celebrate the return of the cicadas. Uh, but with that, I just want to thank our panelists again. Thank you for joining us again. Please continue to uh, mask up, social distance, tell all of your neighbors about vaccinate.dc.gov, and be sure to stay safe. Thanks for joining us today.